Sit down, my dear. That's better. Oh, you're lovely in the Mediterranean moonlight. Mediterranean moonlight. Every girl should wear it instead of makeup and perfume. Champagne? It foams like the spray of the surf and sparkles like your eyes. Yes, they used to call me an intelligence agent and an international operator, a confidential representative, a private eye, even a detective. But now they have machines that do it all so much better. Computers that sort out millions of fingerprints. They never forget a name or a face. That analyze tons of information in minutes. That reduce the art of deduction to bookkeeping. The only use left for my powers of observation and my imagination is speculation upon your charms. <laughs> Theater 5 presents A Caller at Midnight. Roberto! Open the door! Roberto! Wake up, you rascal, and let us in! Three Russian spies are after us. Mr. Benson, you'll wake up everybody in St. Clair. I'm only trying to wake up that old relic, Roberto. Confound these French apartment houses, locking up tight at night. (laughs) Roberto! Why, for all he knows, three Russian spies might be after us. Oh, that would be exciting. Ah, here he is now. Oh, it is you, Monsieur Benson. I should have known. You should have been awake. I have a good mind to tell the manager you were sleeping on the job again. I am the manager. I will report myself to myself. Please to come in. Let us enter, Miss Jones. The portals are open at last. Why, what a fascinating old place. It's just an old chateau Roberto bought cheap and remodeled into an apartment house. The only good thing about it is the view. Straight out over the Mediterranean from a hundred-foot cliff. That's what I pay my rent for, the view. Uh, Speaking of the rent, monsieur. We will speak of it later. (laughs) Miss Jones, you seem amused. You know, Mr. Benton, I haven't the faintest idea when you're being serious and when you're not. Not even though we've been together all day. I really didn't dream an intelligence agent would have a sense of humor. Intelligence agent, please, do not honor me with fancy words. I am merely a businessman. Roberto. Uh, Oui, monsieur. Tell the young lady what business I am in. Uh, Monsieur Benson is in the import-export business, mademoiselle. You see? Just a businessman. He imports and exports the intelligence. He is a spy. Here on the Riviera, many people mingle. There is much gossip and careless talk by people from all countries. St. Clair has many spies... Uh, But uh, Monsieur is our favorite. Confound you, Roberto. You'll get me shot yet. Some night you'll open the door and I'll fall in full of bullets. No, no, Monsieur. It is strictly forbidden to shoot anyone in St. Clair. The police take strong action when there is shooting. It is bad for business. (laughs) Oh, Mr. Benson, you're both so unbelievable. Now, we've known each other all day. So call me Josh, please, and I will call you Nancy. Well, all right, Josh. As for being unbelievable, the whole world is unbelievable. Men racing for the moon. Nations pointing rockets at each other, any one of which could blow up the whole state of Rhode Island. Computers making human beings obsolete. Is any of that believable? Mm, When you put it that way, I suppose you're right. Still, I... Still, we have business to finish up. That I'm getting paid for. You hear that, Roberto? You'll get your rent tomorrow. I am gratified. You wish to be taken up to your room, monsieur? Or um, shall I have Pierre bring uh, you drinks uh, first? Oh, dear, I hope I'm not a bad influence on your reputation, Mr. Benson. No reputation is safe from the reflections of a continental mind, Miss Jones. Roberto. Monsieur? You have the wrong idea. Mm. This young lady is a reporter. Her name is Miss Nancy Jones. She's from an American magazine, and her magazine is paying me to give her a story about how a freelance agent operates today. Mm -hmm. That is all, A-L-L in English, all. 
Well, of course, monsieur. She is also very pretty, and there will be a moon later tonight on the Mediterranean. I will send up the drinks presently, then. Please to enter the elevator. Mr. Benson is still thinking. That's because of the moonlight. We'll have to squeeze into this birdcage they call an elevator here. That's it. Just room for the three of us. If Monsieur were not so fat, there would be room for four. Roberto, you're impertinent. If you weren't the owner of this place as well as everything else, you'd have you fired. Oui, Monsieur. Shall I call you in the morning, or would you prefer to uh, sleep? Blasted Roberto, you have a one-track mind. We will be leaving inside of an hour, as soon as a caller I'm expecting arrives. So don't go back to sleep, you hear? You'll have to be awake to let my caller in. Uh, I understand. At what time will your caller arrive? I will set my alarm clock. Never mind the alarm clock. Just stay awake. You'll be here exactly at midnight. Bring him straight up. Oui, monsieur, there will be a caller at midnight. Anyone who arrives earlier is an imposter. I understand. Your floor, monsieur. And about time, too. Watch your step, Nancy, my dear. There. Don't forget now. Stay awake for my caller. Trust me, monsieur. I will not fail you. <sighs> this way, Nancy. Second door is mine. Step into my humble abode. You see, spies these days are not well paid. I cannot afford the kind of lodging every decent spy in a Hollywood motion picture has. Oh, I think it's nice. The old draperies. Pictures, carved wooden furniture, big room. All left over from when this was a chateau, before Roberto cut it up into rooms and apartments. Here, yeah, but let me take your coat. Oh, thank you. Now, please sit down over here. Mm, of course. And I'll get out my notebook. You promised me... I that... promised you a glimpse, a very small glimpse, of international espionage at work. I do have a caller coming, a very important one, bringing me something that is almost priceless. Perhaps he'll make up for your disappointment in me. <laughs> I didn't think you'd guessed. I'm middle-aged. I'm fat. As a spy, you can see that I'm the joke of the whole Riviera. But I still have a certain amount of wit. Of course you're disappointed. Your magazine commissioned you to write a glamorous, exciting article about freelance spies. Isn't that true? Mm, yes, I guess it is. And you don't make it seem very glamorous, Josh. Not even very exciting. Truth is truth. We freelancers are reduced now to listening for gossip in the gambling casinos, to grubbing for pennies. Giant computers are taking over our work. Facts are fed into thinking machines in the world's capitals... And the conclusions disgorged in seconds. You do make it sound so humdrum. Oh, but surely you're exaggerating. There must be some excitement, some danger. Mm, yes, a little, a little. Smuggling microfilms out of hostile countries now. Machines can't do that yet. I suppose I ought to make a confession, Josh. Oh, let me guess it. You expected Josh Benson, spy, unattached, to be suave, dashing, handsome... Expert at dodging daggers or dallying with divorcees. Mm, yes, I, I'm afraid I did. Or at least a little bit sinister, perhaps with bullet scars. <laughs> I suppose I've been reading too much James Bond. Oh, dear me, James Bond. If life could only be like the books. A continual round of danger, excitement, and suspense. Now, that's what you expected today. Instead... We've had lunch, gone for a drive, visited the gambling casino, had dinner, shamelessly eavesdropped on tipsy foreign officers here on vacation, and not a single tiny secret document has changed hands, has it? Nope, not one. Tell me, did you at least overhear anything interesting? Nothing that hasn't been in the newspapers. Let me tell you something, Nancy. Yes, Josh. You know... You are rather interesting looking in a way. Now, don't get off the track. I was saying that a good agent hates danger. He does his best to avoid it. If I lived like a character in a book, I'd be hooked on tranquilizers in no time. <laughs> yes, I can see that. Still, I think you're quite an interesting man, Josh, and I'm not sorry that... Josh. What is it? Why do you look so startled? 
Those long drapes there. Yes. I admit they need cleaning. Well, there's somebody behind them. Somebody behind them? That's impossible. Well, I saw them move just now. Someone's been hiding behind those drapes ever since we came in and... The lady is quite right, George. But I suppose the time has come to stop hiding. Charlie, what the devil are you doing in my room? I thought you were in Berlin. I am, officially. Uh-uh. Stay where you are. Put up your hands, Josh. That's better. Now, sit down with your hands on top of your head. That's right. You too, young lady. Josh, he's pointing a gun at us. A loaded Beretta. Well, I'm afraid we must do exactly as he says. This is no time for any tricks. Just keep remembering that. I may be able to avoid shooting you both. Now, we will sit quietly and wait for your midnight caller. And then I will take charge of those microfilms that he's bringing. Nancy, I apologize. But I, I don't understand. This thin-faced... Uh... Gentleman pointing his gun at us is quite capable of using it. I apologize for leading you into danger. But you kept saying there was no danger today. A slight exaggeration. Charlie here is a renegade of the old school who will work for anyone and enjoys killing if he can get away with it. Well, thank you for the character reference, Josh. But this time I won't kill either of you if I get those microfilms without any trouble from you. Microfilms? Well, it used to be secret documents. Nowadays, microfilms are easier to smuggle through customs. And these particular microfilms, my dear young lady, are rather unusual. They're rumored to show some new and interesting military installations and supply dumps in the most picturesque and strategic part of the world. The governments have spent millions without obtaining this priceless information. But you see, it, it has a price to me. Charlie, I would certainly like to know how you know so much. You're getting old and clumsy, Josh. This meeting tonight, I knew of it two days ago. You know, you used to be much more clever. Maybe so, but how the devil did you get into this room? Ah, off the balcony, I suppose. Confounded things are a relic of the old days and goes past the windows of the next apartment. That's empty, so I suppose you slipped in there, came along the balcony, and climbed in my window, didn't you? No, no. As a matter of fact, I didn't know about the balcony. It would have saved me some trouble. I picked your lock a few hours ago. Believe me, Charlie, I'm not going to forget this. You may not get the chance to. Put your hands back on the top of your head. Oh, don't be so suspicious. We have a bit of a wait, and I'd like a cigarette. Stand up and turn around. No. Stand up. I'm interested in finding a strip of microfilm worth a million dollars. Now, I wonder if you could possibly have it already. Oh, you're such an optimist, Charlie. Did anyone give me anything today, Nancy? No, nothing. Nothing at all. Pretty women make the best liars. Here, let me check your wallet. Uh-huh. Bills, cars, you can have the money back. I'll keep this wallet and examine the lining later. Thank you for the money, Charlie. I need it for the rent. Nothing in your pockets but cigarettes and a handkerchief. No gun. Oh, yes, yes. You never did carry one, did you, Josh? I rely upon my wits. Guns sometimes backfire. Your wits? <laughs> You're a clown, Josh. All right, I'll keep the cigarettes. Microfilm can be rolled inside of a tube of cigarette paper. I was afraid you'd think of that. I won't search the young lady because I've had the two of you watched all day. And my men didn't see either of you receive anything. Still, luncheon, dinner, drinks, and gambling. Oh, Josh, you're a great talker, but whoever engaged you to receive those microfilms was a fool. I'm beginning to think so myself. May I sit down? Yes, yes, sit down. <sighs> now then, we all wait for your midnight caller, whoever he is, and when he comes... You will shoot us, I suppose. No, no, not if you simply accept the microfilm and then send him away. I'll simply tie you up and you'll be released in the morning. That's very good of you. Well, it seems we may spend the night together after all, Nancy, my dear. Because Charlie is obviously in control of the situation. <laughs> Monsieur, Monsieur Brisson? Who is that, Josh? It can't be your caller. It's only half past eleven. It's the gendarmes, of course. The police! You're lying. You'll see, Charlie, that I'm not a complete fool. 
I asked the chief to send two gendarmes to guard me tonight until the microfilm was safe. He was glad to do so. You know the official attitude toward violence here in San Clair. It's bad for business. Monsieur, are you there? What are you going to do, Charlie? If I let them in and you start shooting, they'll shoot back. And if I don't let them in, they have orders to break down the door. You can't get away. Oh, but I can. The balcony. I'll hide out there in the balcony. I'll keep you covered through the window. So open the door and send them away. If you don't, I'll kill you both and get away through the next apartment before they know what's happening. He can do it, can't he, Josh? Kill us and get away. Last it, yes. That confounded balcony. All right, Charlie. You win. I'll send them away. Wait until I'm outside. And then open the door. And remember, I'm a crack shot. Mr. Vincent. Is anything wrong? Coming, coming. Don't knock the door down. Come in. Come in. No need for all the noise. Pardon, monsieur. Uh, I did not uh, mean to interrupt. Why, it's not the police. It's just a waiter. Oui, mademoiselle. Earlier today, monsieur ordered me to bring champagne after he returned. I am but doing so. Uh, I will set it here. Well, now to open it. Ah, I will leave, monsieur, mademoiselle. Wait, Pierre. For you. One whole franc note. Don't spend it all on luxury. I will take utmost care of it, monsieur. Only. Well, for once the service was on time. Champagne. Ah, vintage here. You like it. Josh, how can you be so casual? That man is still out on the balcony. He may shoot us. I don't think he will. But if he does, we are now expendable. The microfilm he wants so desperately is safely on its way again. But I, I don't understand. Oh, my dear, you must forgive me. I've been using you. Using me? Our conference today, our lunch and dinner together. I arranged it for today for a very special purpose. You did? What purpose? You were to be my screen. No one seeing me dining with a beautiful girl would think I was engaged in important business. Remember at the cafe when the waiter brought me a tray full of frank notes for change? Well... Yes. Yes, I do. One of those frank notes was the same note I just gave Pierre. The waiter in the cafe, myself, Pierre the waiter here, we are only links in the chain that will get that microfilm to the proper people. But you kept saying your caller would arrive at midnight. Simple misdirection, my dear. I also said the caller would bring the microfilm. That was to make sure no one attacked me for it sooner. Actually, I've had it all afternoon. That frank note had been split open. The strip of film placed inside, the note glued together again. Oh, of course. I think I see now why you talk so much and seem so foolish. People do not take me so seriously when I play the clown. But sometimes I show a little cleverness, do I not? Well, I think you're wonderful. But that man on the balcony, he'll be desperate. Now he'll shoot. I doubt it. Let us go see him. Ah, the moon is rising. See the Mediterranean so far below. Hear the waves beating on the rocks. But, but... Yes, my dear. But the balcony. I mean, there isn't any balcony. Champagne, my dear. Theater 5 has presented A Caller at Midnight Written by Robert Arthur and directed by Ted Bell in the cast, Jackson Beck, Mitzi Gould, Gilbert Mack, and Ivor Francis. Audio engineer, Neil Pulse. Sound technician, Ed Blaney. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Vlastotsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. Glenn Osser.